Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information that be better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. My wife and I have been on the carnivore diet for almost two years now, and I get a lot of questions, how can you afford to just eat meat? You have to be a little bit diligent to seek out the sales. I have found one of the ways that has been beneficial in helping us keeping our grocery bill down, and I'm going to share that tip with you coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps get this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into our video. Somebody asked me one time, how can you afford to eat a ribeye almost every day? I said, well, I really, I can't. But you got to think of some of the factors that are added into this. For one, we don't drink any soft drinks. We don't eat any snack food, except for maybe pork rinds occasionally, or maybe some Slim Jims or something like that, but not very often. We eat a lot of eggs, and that's pretty much it when it comes to snack food. On a very special occasion, like a birthday, I might eat a little bitty piece of cake and a little bit of ice cream. But I'm telling you, with a carnivore diet, if you ever get on it strict, it's not very forgiving when you eat something that you shouldn't eat. You can tell it the next day and sometimes two or three days afterwards. So we avoid all the junk food, all the snack foods. We almost never go out to eat because when you go out to eat, especially all you can eat place, there's too many opportunities to cheat and wind up paying for it. We always look for sales. I'm going to tell you the rotisserie chickens at Walmart are pretty much unbeatable for the price. And you can get them after they've went off of the main aisle and they've marked them down and put them in the frozen section, you can buy them things for about $3 a piece, which is amazing. A lot of times we buy two or three of them and we'll make some chicken soup. Hopefully I'll do the recipe for that in the next video or two. So be looking forward to seeing that. Now, one of the best foods for the carnivore diet is a fatty ribeye. The fattier the meat, the better. The reason why is on the carnivore diet, you're on a fat adaptive diet, not a glucose or sugar diet. So you really need fat for your diet. So a lean piece of meat will not give you the energy as a fatty piece of meat would be. A lot of times if I eat something that doesn't have a lot of fat, I'll load butter on it. Say a piece of chicken, that's like a chicken breast that doesn't have a lot of fat. Now with a rotisserie chicken, we eat the skins and all because that's the good fat part. And if it's a little dry, we'll add some butter, give it a little bit of juice. So that's a good way to add to it. Eggs are amazing as well. But the number one meat of choice, probably for every carnivore or ketogenic style diet person out there, is going to be the ribeye. It's the king of all of it. We purchased these right here. They were Angus beef, $10.99 a pound. Now that's a little high. We usually get the ribeye loins from fresh value and when they go on sale they're somewhere around $6.99 a pound plus 10 percent which is pretty close to eight dollars and after you pay tax it's maybe a little over eight dollars but it comes from Mexico and I've got nothing against the Mexican beef the beef that comes from Mexico because a lot of times that's what we'll get because that's all we can afford but there's a huge difference between that beef and the Angus beef that we've got today. Anytime we get a chance, even if we have to pay three more dollars a pound, still $10.99 a pound is way cheaper than the higher price ribeyes. A lot of times you'll pay $30 a pound for a really good uh, ribeye, especially a prime. Now these here are USDA choice, so it's a little lower down on the totem pole than a prime, but they're still good. And I'm telling you the difference with the taste of an Angus beef Compared to the other beef, it's, it's, it's just the joy of eating it is way better, just put it that way. Okay, they were on sale today, so we got a little carried away and bought about 40 pounds of them. So I'm going to process these down, and I'm going to package them up in a uh, vacuum bag so we can freeze them and then take them out when we're ready for it. So let me pull the camera down so you can see how I'm processing these. Now, most butchers, uh, and even my butcher, will actually process these down to the size that I want if I want them cut in one inch, two inch, or whatever. But I found it's a lot easier just to go ahead and buy them, bring them home, that way I can measure them and get an idea exactly how large I want them cut. 
we got this one right here and we even got a half of one this is the same beef right here except for they repackaged it they just cut it in half we're going to start off with the uh, one of the large ones now i've got this large knife it's more like a i don't know what you call it this is uh it's a bread knife or what i don't know it's, it's got a straight edge it doesn't cut like a serration but it's got these little divots in the side to make it not stick to the meat but i like it because it's long and i can cut all the way through the loin now if you don't like dealing with the blood and just messing with it you can get your butcher usually to cut these up and a lot of times every neighborhood grocery store will have a a butcher and they will take care of this stuff for you but uh, we'll try to keep it from draining all over the table i like mine cutting about one pound pieces and the way i like to do it try to get it I'd rather cut it from this side right here. If you notice, it's kind of in an angle this way and an angle that way. A lot of times when you go to a butcher shop, they will cut off this and square it. And they will keep this for themselves or whatever. Sometimes they'll put it in the pack for you. You're paying for the pound, but you get this ugly little end slice. And what I usually do, I will work my way across. The sides don't have to be straight. I'll just work my way across and keep them straight all the way across till I get to the end. And it usually works out. And I like mine to be about one pound. So I like them pretty thick. So I'm going to start off right here. And what you want to do, you want to try to go all the way through. And I like to weigh them occasionally just to get an idea how well I am on task. This one is one pound now. Ain't that nice looking? It's a little rounded on this side because it's the end piece. Now you're gonna have this little scruffy piece here, but I'm telling you that usually winds up being kind of crusty and tasty. Going for my second piece, I'm gonna to try to keep it about the same size. You're saying one pound? That's a big steak. Well, on carnivore, a lot of times we only eat once a day, sometimes twice a day. So I'm going to measure again just to see how well I am on task. 13 ounces. That one's a little small, but that's okay. And we're getting bigger as we go because that side gets longer. I try not to bring my knife out because when you do, you wind up with extra cuts and you don't really want that. Now that's a perfect ribeye right there. One pound. And we're going to try to continue this, this angle right here so we don't have any odd runoff pieces. I'm going to keep going. I kind of got an idea about what's going to be a pound. I got to remember to keep going that direction. We're down here to this smaller piece. And I'm just going to split this in right down the middle. There we go. I'm going to show you one thing that I do. Now, my wife can't eat a one pound ribeye. It's just way, way too much. So what I do is I try to get as much fat involved and I will split it right down the middle for her. And the way I kind of do it like this is that's two for her. Two for me. Do this here again with this one. Two 
two more for her. That's two for me. Okay, now that you've seen how I cut them up and they worked out really good, they worked out even. Like I said, I will cook this alongside. You say, why don't you just cut her a thin steak? I'll be honest with you, when you cut, when you cut a steak thick, it sears better and it's not overcooked and it's, you can still keep it nice and medium rare. If you cook a really thin steak, you're overdone before you know it. So I can cook them together, my one pound and her half pound, and they usually turn out really good. All I use is plain salt. Currently I'm using the Redmond's coarse sea salt. It's been underground way before plastics were ever invented, so there's no microplastics and there's, there's nothing in there except for minerals and salt. So that's what I use. I do use the coarse, the heavier, the larger salt because you can see how much you're putting on there. It doesn't evaporate into the meat all of a sudden where you can you know, kind of tell how much you've got on it. But I'm gonna tell you, I salt them really, really good. And they don't taste salty because that salt works its way through the steak. So I'll salt them on both sides. I'll lay them all out on the table, salt them on both sides. I will put them in vacuum bags, put them in the refrigerator overnight before I freeze them. For some reason, that allows the salt to work its way through before I freeze them. If you freeze them right away, it's not that big of a deal. But I found that it just works better to let the salt work its way through the meat overnight before you freeze them. So let me pull the camera down and I'll show you what I'm doing. I went ahead and transferred my Redmond's Real Salt into a shaker that I purchased some uh, kosher salt in earlier and, and used it. It's a little more handy to be able to shake it onto the steaks. It's a little harder trying to pour it out of that little pour spout of the Redmond's bag. so. This shaker is really handy. I want to make sure that I cover every little bit of the steaks, not to miss anything, especially the smaller pieces, because we want them all to be flavored. You can use flake salt. Flake salt seems to work really well. It doesn't bounce off like this large coarse salt does. So after I get them all covered, make sure that I'm not missed. I will take my hand and just kind of pat the salt into the steak to make sure that it sticks. That way when I flip the steaks over to do the other side, I don't have to worry about the salt just falling off. So now we're ready to flip them over and do the other side. Now you're saying you're putting a lot of salt on there. You'd be surprised. It will soak into the steak and give it really good flavor. And so far I've never had a a steak that felt like it was over salty. One thing about the carnivore diet is you don't retain a lot of salt because you don't retain a lot of water. So it doesn't affect my blood pressure at all. My blood pressure has been great ever since I've been on this diet. It doesn't matter how much salt that I intake. My blood pressure has been absolutely perfect and it used to be very very high. Okay, we've got them all turned over, so let's go back and cover the second side with salt just like we did before. I started off not putting as much salt on them, and I really couldn't tell that it was salty. And I started adding a little more and a little more until I found the uh, perfect amount. And so far, I don't think I've ever oversalted anything. It's always been great. Okay, now that I've got them salted, I'm going to give these a good pat just to make sure the salt doesn't fall off when I get ready to pack them in the vacuum bags. I have enough for 10 meal preps right here. So now let's move on to the next step, which will be vacuum packing these. What I like to do is go ahead and do about five days worth. So I'm putting the two small ones next to two large ones and then two more small ones next to two more large ones. And the way these are going to work out is I'm going to have two vacuum bags. This will give me five days in a row. I'm going to put 
five days worth in one bag and five days worth in another bag. I do like to keep a paper towel to keep my hands dry. I got my vacuum bagger and I like to lay these down here to kind of keep it up high enough with my bags. We'll seal the first end and we're going to want to cut it kind of long. It's better to go too long than too short. And I like to roll my edges inside out. That way it keeps it dry and that way it helps it seal better. Sometimes you got to squish them in there. run out of space but we're gonna make it this is one I like to use the paper towel I tried just laying this on the table flat without a spacer and I always have issues with it not sealing good or not sucking all the air out good. Now this is a five day meal prep. This will last us five or six days. We'll probably eat chicken one day in the middle. I'm going to leave these in the refrigerator overnight, let the salt kind of work its, its power through this thing and do what it's got to do to flavor it and tenderize it. And then tomorrow I will take it out of the refrigerator, put it in the freezer. And one thing about using these bags like this is you save a lot of freezer bags and it saves a lot of time. If I had to package up these things here five different bags i mean you can do that especially if you know you're not going to be home for a few days or you're going to be eating out or doing something different maybe you want to do just for a couple days but we're pretty regular on this so five days we're going to be good and they stack well in the freezer and it's just about the right size to go from front to back in one of my freezer shelves and we can just stack them up and they stack really nicely I'm going to go ahead and process the rest of them. These will last us about a month. And I will say this, that's a pretty good looking stack of ribeyes. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more coming. So I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I would like to share something with you really quickly. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 34 through 36, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing. Mm -hmm.